Hello and what is up everyone, it is Hachi from the Art of Dota and in this video I'm going to be doing a full patch analysis for the new update. It's the Spring Cleaning Update 2018. Unfortunately I recorded a two hour first reaction patch analysis video and it wasn't actually recording. I'm super tilted right now but I am think I'm just going to make this video shorter. It's easier for you guys to watch anyway, and I can go through all the changes because I kind of already know all the changes. You're not going to get my first reactions, but there's nothing insane anyway. Um, most of the things were just nice. As a spring cleaning update, it's something you would expect. So, um, let's just go through it. So, I'm just going to open up the patch real quick here. As you see, uh, there's this new big splash page. They also reworked the menus a little bit, and I'll show you that. But uh, Spring Cleaning Update 2018, they redesigned the player profiles. They have a last hit trainer, you can see right here, gameplay update, and much more. So, I'm going to click a few details. Now, it's just small changes, by the way. So, I did watch, or I did go through everything already. Unfortunately, all that footage is lost. I'm super tilted, honestly, because I was just right off to press upload to YouTube, and I realized, wait, the video wasn't there. But uh, let's just go through things again. Especially because I haven't eaten anything yet before this. I want to get the video out as fast as possible. But I've eaten a energy bar as well as drank some water now. So hopefully I'm not going to die during my second recording of a passion analysis video. But you know, I'm sacrificing a lot here for you guys to get this video out as soon as possible. So... Uh, it's mostly just bug fixes and again I'm gonna go through those real quickly because I realized during my first run of this that many of the things I didn't even realize were broken I'm not even sure we're, gonna, we're even gonna go through them in detail but in terms of the changes they change the profile so this is what the new profile is gonna look right now um, you have the hero that you can display on the right side and it shows your cosmetics so you can show off it also shows the conduct summary right there in addition, they move some things around, right, with an activity feed taking up uh, this space right here. Uh, this is your recent matches. They increase the size of your profile picture, and in the background here, you could also add any loading screen that you would like, instead of this basic smoke and whatever background. Now, if you see here, they said they're going to redesign it. You can show your cosmetics for your favorite heroes, etc., etc. Now, they also have a gameplay catalog notification. Now, this applies to all updates. So, it logs when the last time you played was, and it'll log all the changes to a certain hero. And if you pick that hero, you know, in ranked, and you don't know that certain things changed, it's going to show you this little eye notification, and you're going to be able to see all the changes in the recent patches that you missed. Now, Dota, as it evolves, you can keep track of all the changes because as Dota constantly evolves, keeping track of all the changes can be daunting. Now you can see which heroes have updated by looking at their top or portrait, and this is really nice. Um, and that's pretty much it. But again, this is going to apply to all patches. I talked about this a little bit yesterday in my video on the bi-weekly patches. Now, if you didn't know, there's going to be patches every two weeks now. You can't expect a patch notes a vid video on time on this channel so as soon as the patch comes out or as soon as I see the patch comes out sometimes I'm gonna be sleeping but when I see it I'm gonna make the video as soon as possible if I can and get out for you guys to see now they also added a last hit trainer game mode and I'm gonna be covering this in another video so I'm gonna to talk too much more about that and I read through all these things first time around I'm not gonna do it this time around you guys can read it for yourselves because I'm not going to make another two hour video. And I am making sure I'm recording this time. So, frick you, OBS. So, improved buyback notifications. What this pretty much is, is for buybacks now, it's going to sh like pin a little thing on the side, but it also will show it when you hold Alt. So, you hold Alt, and it's going to show which heroes have buyback on top. Uh, kind of updated. It already did show, but it wasn't intuitive, I think. Did it already show? I think I already showed. I'm not even sure. But now it's more intuitive. So you can hold Alt to see which heroes have buyback. And it also says the timer when you press Enter and it's pinned to the side. Pretty much it for that. Now, live Pro Circuit Tournament tab. So any 
minor or major going on, you can see it as the watch tab on or the watch panel, similar to uh, what happened with the previous majors. For some reason, they took this out. Now, this is a change long coming. I don't know why they didn't add this in earlier, as we're already like halfway through the season, but better late than never. Now, for this, in the strategy time, you could actually give your tangos away during strategy time so you don't waste it during, uh, you don't waste all that time when the game starts. It's really nice. And you also can give, uh, not couriers, you can give wards and sentries as well. Now for this, team teleport status. You can see your whole team's teleport status when you hold alt. And of course, this is the buyback, this gold thing, gold little ring here is buyback status. But now you hold alt, you can see cooldowns for all TPs. Again, this is really nice, saves you a lot of time. Because before you'd have to check each hero individually. Now, ban imminent. <laughs> this is something that I've been asking for, but I'm gonna actually gonna read this one, but you see, an extremely high number of reports or excessive negative behavior has been detected on your account. Further reports or negative behavior may result in a six month ban. They're gonna warn you first for giving you that ban, but if you are continuing to be toxic, you destroy your items. No longer is low prior the only penalty. They're gonna start issuing out long bans, half a year bans. That's for like a whole ranked season. So they're automatically issuing six month matchmaking bans. Before I think they did it manually or something. But now it's automatic for players that show an extreme frequency of negative behavior, feeding, abandoning, player abuse, etc. Now I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent about this because I think the reason why Dota is so toxic is because there's no punishment. In other games like League of Legends, like Overwatch, and there's still toxicity. But if you're too toxic in those games, you actually get banned. Now in Dota, there's no repercussions. The worst thing that's going to happen to you is you sit in five games of low prio. And you're just back into the game. Back into the toxic cesspool of ranked matchmaking. But now with six month bans, I know people can get other accounts, but that means they have to get a new phone number. No, if it's a Smurf account, they'll have to like play at a lower MMR or whatever. So this definitely will uh, deter some people from being toxic. So there's a good change there. Language based matchmaking is another thing that everyone has been asking for for a long time. So they're actually going to match players uh, based on language now. Before it was a thing that they factor in, but now they're going to have a higher weight to it. Now, can this be used to abuse? So like, you know, Chinese players can just like queue together or something and like try to like stack in ranked. I don't know why I said Chinese players. Like, anyone theoretically can do that, right? But like, I said Chinese because you have to be kind of like a, a non-major language for a region. Like, for example, Chinese on U.S. East, right? Or like, you can be Portuguese on U.S. Like, you could just be not actually speaking that language, which I'm trying to say. Not like so. For the reason I say Chinese players, they're known to do this already, where they would stack on teams with just having Chinese language setting. So I've ended and I'm so end up in some games where I just have like. Three Chinese guys speaking Chinese on USC at like 2 a.m. I'm like, what, what's going on? But like, for example, you and your friends can put like Portuguese as a language and then queue on US East. And then like, you might get a random Brazilian, but most likely if you're queuing all at the same time at a high MMR, you actually can just queue into your friends all the time and solo ranked. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for that. Now, going onward, re deliver courier items. They just made it a little bit easier to, to re-deliver. I don't, I'm not sure that actually works. I'm not even going to cover it more here. Custom games have been fixed, by the way. So they made the arcade a lot better looking in terms of ease of finding games. In addition, they give a penalty if you don't ready up, which is a major problem with custom games. And I'm not a big custom game player myself, but I do play custom games from time to time. And the main thing that annoyed me was it was super hard to actually find a game that wasn't like some weird like European Russian lobby and then also pe people kept denying the queue or the uh, accept game or whatever so they're gonna fix that slightly they also are going to add dedicated servers for custom games all custom games so really excited for anything that's gonna make me play more custom games again I'm not really a big custom game player in Dota but back in the day when I played Starcraft 2 I was really into them and I like the custom game community in Dota to grow so I can play some cool custom games. It's fun to just chill out time to time and just play some random games. 
Now you're going to add the uh, mini map neutral difficulty icon. So you can see what's a big camp, a medium camp, and a small camp. Uh, this is more so for new players. Again, if you're experienced in the game at all, you should know exactly uh, which camps spawn where. Now there's also a ready check for when you're queuing with friends. You can hit a ready check and it's going to be a preliminary queue to see if everyone's actually here. And if someone is not here, you're going to immediately know so you don't queue and accidentally queue ban yourself. Which is really annoying, right? When someone has to go to the bathroom or get something to eat um, and they don't tell you, you just end up uh, accidentally queuing and then you just get queue banned for like 5 minutes or potentially like 20 minutes if it was your second time. Now there's the active friend feature where all friends that have recently played the game will show up so you know who's actually available to play and not just AFK. Then you're going to bring back the color coded teleport so you can actually see the color again of the hero TPing in. This is just something that Reddit asked for and if Reddit asked for something they seem to always get it. Same thing with this change, visual tower damage. For some reason this was removed, no one knows why, it might just have been an oversight, but now the towers are going to be visually damaged again, meaning that if they're low HP, they're going to actually show physical damage on the model. Now, these are all the quality of life changes, and we're going to try to go through these as quickly as possible, because a lot of these are just super irrelevant, and you don't even, you didn't even know these things were broken in the first place, and having them fixed is not going to affect you at all. So. So you can just go through this quickly. Hero loadout page now shows what scepter upgrade that the hero has. This means when you go to heroes, um, it actually shows which heroes have scepters and what the scepter does. This is really nice. So before, you actually couldn't tell until you load into a game. I really like this change. Talents can now show tooltips by pressing alt. So you press alt in game. Talents are going to show like tooltips or what they do um, exactly. This is really nice as well because before you can get no information on talents. Anyone in the party can now invite other players directly. Um, not only the party leader is a really nice change. As before, you could only suggest, which was just messy. Commands now provide notification to players that includes your name. So when you commend someone, it lets the player know that you've commended them. That's a nice change. Runes can now be pinged via the minimap, which means that like a DD rune spawns on the minimap. It's spotted by a ward. You can ping it without actually having to move your camera there. It saves you some time. Ability icons now show a progress overlay for cast points once the button is pressed. Now, I'm still not sure what this actually means. So, does it mean cast points as in like the uh, animation, right? Is that what that means? Progress overlay for cast points. I'm assuming that's what it means. So when you cast an ability, it's going to show like how long the ability takes actually to get cast. Something like that. Again, we'll have to see in game. Uh, we're not going to cover that anymore. But I'm pretty sure that's what that means. That's what I interpreted as the first time around. Buildings now show an effect when getting hit under backdoor protection. So it's going to be really obvious now if you're trying to you know, push high ground through backdoor which is sometimes wasn't obvious to people before, especially at lower skill. Added spectating view for scan and glyph. I have no idea what that means. We'll figure out. <laughs> Fixed various disconnection issues that affect custom games. Again, more fixes to custom games. As before, like, the custom games were broken. I mean, I think there was, like, a, a issue on Reddit where someone was actually just moving bots into custom games and just making them unplayable. I'm pretty sure they stopped that by now, but they were just spamming Baumi's game mode. Um, and he did confirm that he was not involved, and I believe him because why would he be involved if uh, he's just going to get some backlash from the community? It's just not a good way to advertise his games, unless he's just the next level about it. But uh, he seems like a trustworthy person. So I like to see all these changes affecting custom games. I know a lot of people do play custom games, and anything to make that community better uh, that Valve can do. I mean, they've already done so many wrong things, so... They're kind of trying to make up for it now. Improved input latency for lower end machines. That really doesn't affect me, but affects a lot of people out there. Uh, unit tooltip now shows status resistance. It was something that just wasn't you know, viewable anywhere. And now it is. 
lifetime and recent game stats are no longer shown to non-friends that includes your like gpm and things like that so people can no longer flame you for having low gpm nice added option to bring dota forward to match starts and when picking phase starts same thing for when the game is unpaused this makes it so that it fixes accidental afks you forget you play you, sometimes people forget the queue for a game dota i've seen it happen i don't know how it happens but i've seen it happen uh, and this is just hoping to fix that added alt click support to sun and moon to indicate how much time left on day and night now this is really good for a coddle and like night stalker that really rely on day and night it also is like good for like ganking like if you want to go for a gank during night time in ping all oh, 30 seconds till night let's get ready something like that um it was something i would do actually in the past and i I noticed this with a lot of these changes where I would just kind of naturally do some things and it just didn't work the way I thought it would. And we'll see more of those uh, going onward. But now, for example, Night Stalker with Agnum, so you can just ping and instead of just saying the time, it says 30 seconds till night. You know. Added the following new average stats to profile net worth, average win rate, average damage dealt, and average heals. And this nice to see these stats included as the profile and I might I'm gonna save that for the next video in the next video I'm gonna get something to eat for real and then I'm gonna just record part two where I'm gonna show you the things actually in game for now we're just gonna read the patch notes hope it's showing up big enough on screen for you guys to read I'm checking my OBS right now seems big enough last time I recorded I used uh, Google but I wanted to show the uh, a feature so you'll, you'll see now disassembling is now allowed while dead it was super annoying that you couldn't do that before holding alt now also shows sentry ward aoe that just didn't work for some reason before and a lot of these changes are kind of just obvious they just weren't added unit tooltip now shows movement speed base and bonus that's really nice so you know exactly like where your movement speed is coming from consume tomes now show up on the post game screen that's just nice there skills can now be leveled up during a pause which is super annoying i mean i've tried to do this many times it's the same thing uh, i was saying before where things that you try to do and just didn't work most of those are kind of ironed out now skills can now be alt click during a pause as well buying items while dead now go to your inventory directly rather than the stash and this is super annoying added a new backend feature to immediately disable hero in case of exploits while a fix is being processed so let's say Chen or Enchantress can suddenly take over Roshan again or a hero can just crash the game they can just remove them immediately without having to initiate a patch so that they can fix that added charge counts and this wouldn't be the first time that this happened by the way and there was a time where I remember OD can just duplicate items <laughs> so <laughs> with Valve it is, it is good to have that panic button added charge counts to item alerts so I'm assuming if like a ping bottle and things like that they're going to show the charges which is really a big deal on here is like IO where I tried to ping my empty bottle and it doesn't it just says I have bottle <laughs> not very informative same thing with wand you can have a wand and ping it to show that you have a full wand so they can try to bait or something like that alt click on observer and sentry ward combos now list the amounts for each which is really nice so you can show your team is exactly how many wards you have Alt click on temporary buffs says how much time remains. So, for example, Terror Blade that's Metamorphosis, he can ping his Metamorphosis buff and show that it's about to end so his allies back off. Upgrade courier button active status now has been replaced with auto upgrade time. Uh, before it would just show if it was either flying or walking, but now it actually shows the time, which is really nice. The highlighted player on the watch tab will always be the highest leaderboard rank pro if one exists in the match now this means that when you go to the watch tab hopefully it doesn't go away but you see here you go to the watch tab it's going to show only the highest ranked player instead of just switching around randomly in addition this star means that they are actually a licensed pro player now i don't know what that actually means it means that they're playing for a pro team but what actually constitutes that i don't know you see a lot of pro players here, licensed pro players, and only the highest MMRs. Uh, hold on, that's spoiler alert. Where was... Don't tell me it loses my spot. I lost my spot. 
Gee, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. So I keep that in mind when I'm trying to show things. I can't really do it without losing my spot, but I think it should be fine for. I usually can catch my position in the thing easily. So here you go. Uh, I already talked about that as well. Pro players now have an indicator next to their name to show that they are a pro. <clears throat> Accept and refuse party dialogue now supports enter escape, whatever, improve the UI performance, just more uh, changes to performance, which is appreciated in Dota when things just kind of lag sometimes. When returning to base with items after failing to deliver to death, the courier will now put them in your stash. Now what this means is pretty much if a courier is flying to you and you die while well, it's flying to you, when it goes back to base, it's going to put all the items that it was about to deliver into your stash instead of leaving it on it. Because sometimes your allies will use the courier and when you respawn you won't have your items and then it's just real annoying. So I like that change. Wards will no longer combine from two different players, which used to happen randomly. Now they're never going to combine anymore, which is really nice. Why can't I scroll? What the heck did I do? Why is my scroll not work? I guess we're just manually scrolling on the side here. Oh, now, now it works. Uh, where were we? Fix alt clicking and an item on the courier saying ready instead of on courier. So now, we, <clears throat> again, there's things that would happen where you try to ping something and say it's on the courier. No, it would just say ready and your allies would be super confused. Uh, same thing with your backpack or in stash. When you ping something that was in your sash, it would say it was in your backpack. Now it says it's in the sash. Alt clicking day in slash necro now says what level it is. Surprised that wasn't in the game already. This assembling is now allowed when an item is in the stash, so you can mess with your items in the stash without having to move it back and forth. Alt clicking items and abilities now works on allied heroes, so you can click on your allied items. For some reason. Alt clicking buffs now works on heroes, units, buildings for both allies and enemies. So now you can click on any buffs to show like, oh, Terror Blade Metamorphs is ending soon. Let's go. That's the first thing that came to mind. But of course it applies to a lot of things. You know, or repelled enemy or something like that. Added color blind support for power treads. That's red and green. Hard for colorblind people to see. I like that change from Vow. Keep in mind the disabled people. Or is he, I can't consider color blindness as dis I guess it's a disability as to a sense, right? Definitely makes it difficult to do certain things. Taskbar icon now flashes on pregame and when the game starts. So you get a notification for that if you alt tap. It also flashes when getting a party invite. Added extra cosmetic slot for the following heroes Arc Warden, Monkey Control, and Viper. So they get more slots now, more hats. Fix various inconsistency with AFK and abandoned behaviors. Um, I think that's just with their AFK and abandoned tracking. I don't know. Fix being unable to sell items for levers. Apparently that was a problem. I don't know about that either. Add support for alt clicking on the courier while dead to display the respawn time. Reduce AFK time from 6 to 5 minutes. So... Um, now if someone's AFK for 5 minutes, they're going to get booted. They're not booted, but they're going to get an abandon. Before it was 6 minutes, I thought it was 5, but apparently it was 6 minutes. Fix a bug where summon units of abandon slash AFK players were not able to be controlled. They fixed coaching a little bit, because the coach slot was actually just absolutely broken. Now the pings and map drawings can be seen again. And the coach chat icon has been fixed, as well as... The coach used to have a broken hero selection screen. I haven't actually played as a coach like in a queue for a while, but I've been a coach in a lobby games, and it seems to be okay for lobby games, but I know it was broken if you were queuing with people. Items now combine out of your stash immediately when you die. It was just super annoying when you bought items while you're dead. You have to wait until you respawn before they combine. Fixed minor minimap inaccuracies. And there's a lot of these guys. There's a lot of them. We're going to go through them fast. Because a lot of them are pretty uh, insignificant. All clicking items with charge counts now prints a number of charges. Uh, I think we already talked about this. Let's say this again. But now it shows exactly how many earned charges you have, how many bottle charges, which is really helpful. Same thing with wards, tangos, and TPs. Now, immediately I thought about 
buying like 10 centuries or like like just auto buying like century wars like people do to throw the game and just ping or oh, i have 50 centuries or something like that that's what came to mind but <laughs> i'm just used to so uh, people trolling so much fix being unable to see party invitations for friends you muted i thought that was a feature but apparently it wasn't fix first blood kills tracker being incorrect i don't even know what that means fix the top bar ultimate status showing no mana if you died without mana but it would have mana after respawn Ability draft fix a bug causing ability pings not working reliably. They also fix issues with infernal blade having multiple procs I don't even know about that. I don't play ability draft new hero list now allows all heroes that don't have three diamond complexity rating. So uh, people were complaining about this how a new player if they join the game They only limited to what 25 heroes something like that now They're able to play anything that isn't three diamond which is like Meepo and like Chen the micro heroes and like heroes like Io and stuff like that as well Observer and the sentries are now in separate item slots during the strategy phase, which is really nice. So you can share them easier and stuff like that. Updated default hero builds. Uh, I'm assuming it just updates all the builds in the games to be up to date. Fix the bug where sometimes unranked games are showing ranked medals. I don't know that. I don't play unranked too much. Fix Oracle not working on the workshop. I'm assuming that means the hero. And not too significant there. Fix a bug where sometimes unranked games are sh uh, hold on. I Doubled back here. The attribute help tooltip now displays extra bonus heroes received from their primary attributes. This is very big, as I feel like many people don't even know this. So, strength heroes they get status resistance from strength, uh, int heroes get magic resistance, and agility heroes get move speed. And now it actually shows it. It did show it before, but you have to kind of look for it. Update missing buff icons on tower auras, and I just quality of life. Fix a bug where some units weren't speaking. I had no idea what this means. I'm not even going to try to elaborate on it. I don't even know what some units were speaking. Uh, at first, I assumed illusions, but that can mean whatever it wants to mean. Fix the bug where friends list was sorted by persona name and not nickname. Added a convoy to allow microphone to not be muted when tabbed out, which is nice. Fix case where the mouse cursor could be stuck. After all tabbing, it was super annoying, especially if you play Dota in full screen. And I'm glad to see that fixed. Increased mesh density and small textures update on Quop and Windrunner. And we gotta check. Is Quop's ass fixed? I actually can't tell. Looks kind of fixed. Before, it'd be kind of triangular. It still looks kind of triangular. Not the highest resolution, but... Uh, assuming it is fixed. Oh, we have to scroll back down. Fusion me. Where was it? Here. Uh, fix a broadcast bug where holding select to follow hero did not work properly. Added VO to Terrorblades hero loadout. I don't even know what that means. Fix being unable to jump to hero quickly while dragging during broadcast. Okay. Now to the gameplay changes. This is what you like to see, but most of the gameplay changes here are actually just irrelevant. And you'll see. Walking into shop range now clears backpack item move cooldowns. This is really big. Because it was super annoying before when you tried to like move something in and out and you barely missed the shop. And then it would just end up being on cooldown. Now if you move in the shop, like that 6 second cooldown is just going to go away immediately. So... Like let's say you're out of shop cooldown and you swap something in, it's on six second back back cooldown. You walk into the shop, no longer on cooldown. Problem solved. Fix Lincoln Sphere providing five HP regen instead of displayed five point five, and that's why I say a lot of these are irrelevant. Because did you guys know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> How many pro players knew that? Fix Soulcatcher talent reducing cooldown by five seconds instead of displayed six, and it just brings back to like when AA had that change where like his ultimate was literally just always the talented ultimate his level 25 talent was always applied and no one recognized that so a lot of these fixes are just the, just that um fix many out of date tooltips of course fix elder titan echo stomp damage threshold not working properly again i did not know that Fix spike carapace damage return talent not working probably. Fix homing missile taking one extra hit than intended to kill. And if you guys know this, shout out to you because like these are pretty uh, like uh, 
obscure obscure uh, bugs improved visual effect accuracy for shrapnel added allied visual effect to indicate which unit is the target for tusk snowball and this is this is actually a big thing so when you snowball you bring an ally in you actually can see who you're snowballing to only for allies of course the enemies still can't see it um that's actually the f only major change out of here other than the shop thing added a visual effect for death pack buff this also is kind of major so death pack is clink's ultimate so if you ult something with clink's you actually can see if he's like buff or not which is a nice change. Now going to uh, oh okay, if some of these were considered relevant enough to be highlighted, you're gonna see what's coming up. Fixed test of fate being unable to target ancients. I'm surprised this wasn't highlighted. So test of fate is Chen's second ability, and it previously wasn't able to target ancients because of uh, pretty much a bug. Because before test of fate was used to take over creeps, and it wasn't able to be used on ancients, so you can't take over ancients. Now that they removed that to Holy Persuasion, his third ability, um, this was just a carryover that they forgot to remove. Now that gets fixed. So now, like, Test of Fate, like, that's just his nuke, right? So if you use it on Ancients now, it just would damage them. Still, like, you wouldn't use it on Ancients. It's just, again, quality of life change. Fixed Lycan Wolves placement when upgraded with the talents. I don't even know what was wrong with their placements before, but he has like a plus three wolves or something talent, so now they're like placed better when he spawns them. I don't know. Fixed Power Cogs damage source. I don't know what was wrong with the damage source. Can't elaborate on that. Fixed Gust giving neutral creeps permanent phase movements. Now, this is insane. So, you're telling me that before Drow could use uh, Gust onto a creep, and it would get permanent phase so that you could just stack them off of a cliff. So they just cliff walk. I've never seen anyone do that. I'm surprised that no pro figured that out. But again, why would any pro player accidentally use Gust onto a creep? Uh, let, me, let me just silence these creeps real quick. Actually, that could happen. What if they wanted to silence like the uh, the ancients that do like that stomp, the shamans? So yeah, I'm surprised that no one figured that out. So you can like just because I'm assuming if they get phase movement. Wait, no, it's phase movement. It's not you. Uh, so they can't walk over cliffs. Never mind. Uh, I was misreading that. So they get phase movements where they can walk into each other, but they can't walk off cliffs. That's phase. I was thinking of the wrong thing there. So and not as crazy as I thought it would, but still a nice change. And again, Drow doesn't gust creeps. <laughs> so I, I don't know where that would apply, but it's nice that they're fixing it. Fixed monkmanship scepter uh, projectile being undodgeable. And that's Drow's ultimate. Fix fear not affecting primal split units properly. Um, I can see why that's broken. Added psionic trap buff counter. That's nice. So you can see how many uh, traps you have. Fix various. Uh, that's TA traps, by the way. Fix various vision projectiles from blocking neutral cam spawn when moving over the spawn box. I thought this was a feature. Apparently it wasn't. So this applies to things like A blast and uh, rocket flare from Clockwork. And the reason why this was. Uh, a case in the first place is in Dota 1 to code this they had to uh, literally spawn a creep and move it across the map or spawn a unit and move it across the map and then when it got to its location it would cast a spell and because it was coded as a unit that was invisible moving across the map uh, it would block camps and in Dota 2 they carry that over and they just programmed it the same way when they realized wait that doesn't really make sense so they fixed a bug that was a a feature that was a bug that was carried over from Dota 1. Okay. Fixed rare cases where items wouldn't combine when arriving from the courier. I don't even realize that happened. No, I didn't realize this happened either. Spirit Vessel apparently could heal through Ice Blast and it also pierced damage blocking abilities. Now that's fixed. Great smell. Fixed familiars not gaining Grave Chill buff if cast in stone form. I'm not a visage player, I don't know that for sure. Uh, I know this, Ezreal Spirit uh, Illusion used to show a hero on the minimap. Now that's fixed. It used to be confusing. Fixed Dream Call, Refresher, or Regression. I have no idea what that means. Fixed Shackle Shot with status resistance. And you're going to see a bunch of stuff broken with status resistance. I'm not even going to mention them. Because um, like, who knew these were broken with status resistance, honestly? Like, who knew? Fixed Nature's Prophet, Greater Tree Animal, not getting the proper bonus from the talent. I guess that's something that you could recognize. Now, Shiva's Guard, status resistance, why? 
fixed strafe disjointing allied projectiles, which is really funny. I didn't know this was the case, but so strafe is Clinks' uh, first ability, and if you guys didn't know, it allows you to dodge stuff now. But uh, it apparently allows you to dodge allied projectiles as well. So, for example, uh, Oracle casting his purge onto you, you just dodge it. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Now that's not no longer the case, and it also fix it. Uh, so now you're able to dodge uh, Bedlam, which is uh, Dark Will's ultimate, as well as Drow Scepter. But who buys Drow Scepter? Penitent is now a proper projectile, whatever that means. Fixed Nether Strike, Status Resistance. I'm just going to skip over the Status Resistance. Fixed uh, Nether Strike is a uh, Spirit Vaker ultimate. Fixed Visual Bug with Holy Persuasion buff being dispellable. I don't know what the visual bug is. I think the the buff would like the bug would be the buff still shows, but it would still be dispelled. I think that's what the bug is. I don't know. This is Chen's uh, send back, by the way. If you didn't know, you can purge it to uh, stop the send back. But uh, I guess it would still show the buff on them, even though it got dispelled. I don't know. Fix focus fire damage working incorrectly on the first hit. Fix focus fire bash talent not working on non primary targets. Fix a rare case where javelin will sometimes proc on buildings. So apparently, Windrunner focus fire is kind of broken. But who plays that hero? Fix troll warlord fervor legacy keys. Fix morphling legacy keys for ability draft. They added vengeful nether swap. Fix the visual bug when attempting to place a ward. I don't know what that bug is. Fix incorrect stat tooltips or necronomicon. Surprise that makes that through. Then they already said they fixed tooltips. Why why specifically add this? Fix Tusk Walrus Punch effects not being destroyed. Reliable when Rubik steals a spell. I don't even know what the heck that means. Fix fake projectiles like Phantom Lancer and August Sirens. Um, and what I figured the difference between a fake perfect projectile and a uh, proper projectile is that fake projectiles are like uh, they're not disjointable, right? It's so like Phantom Lancer and Naga. Um, and now they don't cause uh, strafe to be consumed. And that's Clink's Q. That allows him to dodge stuff. But it would have made sense for him to dodge things that can't be dodged. Fix Illuminate Channel not working correctly with Channel Requires Stop. This is super annoying with Coddle. It actually made me stop using this option. Fix Courier Shield Legacy Key. Fix Spirit Vessel Visual Effects sticking around after Dispel. Fix Stampede not working. This actually made the wiki think that uh, Spirit Vessel was not spellable. So, like that. Fix Stampede not working properly with Monkey King. Uh, I don't know what that was. Fix various attack range modifier related bugs. Fix some courier bugs while carrying bottle. I'm assuming with empty bottle. Fix Storm of Spirit level 25 talent creating extra revenants when skilled during ball lightning. If you don't know what this is, before if you literally jumped like super long distance and then queued up your level 25 talent midway um it would just summon a bunch of remnants at the end and uh, there's some big plays of that but that was a bug so no surprise to see that fixed tempest aura with status resistance that's just fixed what is isn't this what is tempest aura Is that Arc Warden, right? No, that's not. What is Tempest Aura? Is that freaking the Wild Wing Ripper? That's Wild Wing Ripper. It's the Tornado. I thought that's what it was. So that's fixed. Um, fix no field toggle interrupt. Oh no, fix tether pull range breaking prematurely when using cast range bonuses. So that's for IO. Fix no field toggle interrupting channeling, which is nice. So you can toggle your no field while channeling your stolen black hole. Fix adaptive strike talent ignoring cast range bonuses. Um, apparently that was broken. Makes morphling worse than he is <laughs> already. Fix Rubik using strafe causing him to dodge his own spell seal. That's hilarious. Fix no field talent not taking effect until toggled. Fix tree and overgrowth scepter upgrade still applying scepter effects after dropping the item. Fix Lincoln Spear going into cooldown if homing missile hits you while you're a cyclone. That just makes sense. Fix the delay between pit of malice intervals being affected by status resistance, another status resistance and skill uh, interaction that no one knew actually 
I was in the game. That was bugged. Fixed the delay between pit and mouse. Oh, wait, no, I read the back. Fixed flathead visual bugs showing non primary projectiles as carrying proc effects like Scotty and Desolator. Now, this is a pretty prevalent bug. Uh, so, when you use uh, Scotty with flat cannon, it will just show the effect everywhere, which may makes people think that it actually procs Scotty and everyone, but it doesn't. That was just a visual thing. Fix stifling dagger talent, ignoring cast range bonuses. Again, why? Fix chemical rage talent malfunctioning when refreshing chemical rage buff. Who knew that? Fix Rubik illusion copying incorrect state of null field. Makes it very obvious which heroes are, what is the hero and what is the illusion. Fixed snowball vision duration being affected by status distance, which is annoying. Again, status distance is very buggy, it seems. Improved bot behavior for choosing lanes, improved bot logic as well, so they don't walk past towers to pick up runes. Fixed hunter in the night versus mines. So if you guys didn't know, you can actually fly over mines with like Bat Rider, Firefly, and Winter Wyvern and stuff like that. And apparently Hunter and Night just didn't work. Now they fixed that. Fixed certain things like that's just literally a cosmetic. Fixed status resistance reducing Rolling Thunder's timeout debuff. Which is weird. Now this is for custom games and these are for other things that I'm not even going to cover. You can read that if you want. It's a little bit too complicated. And I guess Turbo, they fixed some weird things, but uh, it's pretty irrelevant. Now, this is what you've came to see. These are the gameplay patch update for 7.07. .07. Again, these are coming every two weeks. So I'm going to be uploading a video every two weeks. Hopefully, I actually click the record button next time. But um, the upside for you guys, you're getting a cleaner video. I kind of tuned through a lot of the garbage as there's a bunch of garbage in the spring cleaning update no big surprise a lot of these were just changes that you wouldn't even know were changes right uh, i tried to cover the major things that i actually noticed myself that were bugs that are fixed but other than that like how would anyone notice that status resistance for tusk not even the snowball itself right just the vision of the snowball was slightly bugged because again, like not a lot of heroes get status resistance. Only the strength heroes, and then only certain strength heroes will get enough strength where the status resistance is noticeable. And the only hero that where it's super noticeable is Tiny, because he has a ultimate that gives him status resistance. Now moving on to the gameplay patch, I already went through these again because I recorded this first time around. It was like about two and a half hours, and I just didn't record it. I accidentally hit preview instead of record. And let's get into it. These are the gameplay patch updates for 7.08. For the general changes, wars now require two hits to kill no matter what. So you can't one-shot wars if you have a lot of damage anymore. But also if you're like really low damage. I don't know what heroes don't two-shot wars so they're pretty low health. But um, this is a good, it's a good consistency change. Now this applies for both observers and sentries. Tier 1 tower armor bonus has been increased so... You can try to debate under your tower a little bit more, especially if you have like a salve or tango running or maybe fairy fire. The bounty rune base experience has been reduced from 25 to 0, so bounty rune is overall going to give slightly less experience, not too significant throughout the game. Bounty rune gold growth increase from 2 per minute to 4 per minute, so bounty runes overall are going to scale by twice as much as they did in the past, which can be significant. Um, Roshan now has status resistance 25%. Okay, I don't know how that that really changes things. It's gonna apply to things like you know if you cast like uh, uh, silences and abilities onto him. All pick drafting or uh, actually it applies to like stuns as well because people do like to stun Roshan to make it easier to take. All pick drafting time per hero selection reduced from 30 to 25 seconds. You get have a little bit less time to pick. Okay. Now, on to the real changes here with the item changes. A on this, they're going to reduce the health threshold from 80% to 70%. Now, 80% felt a little bit too high for the item to be truly effective. Because you would get hit by a random nuke or whatever, and then suddenly A on this would just proc, and it has a pretty long cooldown. I feel like 70% is a lot better point for the item. That 70% is like, you're not in the risk of dying or anything like that. But at the same time, um, uh... It's a lot lower so that you're not afraid of having it just proc randomly off of one nuke or two nukes. I'm going to nerf Battle Fury a little bit here, reducing the bonus damage by 10% to creeps. And the uh, creep bonus damage also doesn't work with illusions anymore. Uh, PL nerf. PL Battle Fury nerf. <laughs> Black King Bar. 
cooldown has been rescaled. Now it's 70 seconds at all levels. Gonna reduce the duration or the cooldown at level one, but I think this is a nerf because in general, like heroes with five second BKBs that also like have a cooldown reduction talent, like Shadow Fiend and Broodmother, are going to be nerfed because they really like to have that low uh, cooldown BKB with five seconds, so they can just pop it like randomly and have it on. Like it would go down to like 30 second cooldown or something for them, and now it's going to be slightly more. Blink Dagger cooldown has been increased, slight nerf to that item. Uh, affects heroes like Puck that like to use it to escape. Enchanting Mango as well as Fairy Fire, both going to be buffed slightly. These items weren't purchased enough as most people were just buying salves and clarities. I like to change there to Mango. Uh, even some mid heroes right now are buying Mango instead of Clarity as uh, they don't want to, uh, uh, mid players I like to say, but mainly on Shadow Fiend and I've seen uh, Zeus do it a couple times as well. They can just surprise the enemy hero just by having that casual mango to pop the nuke. Fairy Fire, uh, again 10 health increase, nothing major. They're just trying to give attention back to the item. People are not buying enough. I think the only player I've seen consistently buy Fairy Fire is uh, GH. I think Miracle does as well. Four Staff, time it takes for the full distance to be traveled increase from 0.4 seconds to 0.5 means that it takes a little bit longer the force staff slower a nerf that item which is op force staff broken they're also going to nerf hurricane pike in the same way but they're also going to increase the hurricane pike cooldown to match force staff so both force staff and hurricane pike cooldown will now be 23 seconds now this is a big buff to meteor hammer meteor hammer now has its cooldown reduced to 40 to 28 seconds i was going to make a meteor hammer video but the patch out I gotta make the patch notes video first, and I'll probably make the meteor hammer video sometime later. I might just even test it out a little bit myself, as I was gonna mainly focus on uh, crit going for meteor hammer on Nick Assassin. But now I think with this change to meteor hammer, it's a super viable item. I think it's cost, or no, it's uh, cast point or whatever got reduced in the uh, cast time got reduced in the previous patch, and now its cooldown is reduced. To 28 seconds. I was talking about this with my friend where I said if the cooldown is reduced on Meteor Hammer, it actually can be a viable item. It's really good for farming on heroes that I normally couldn't farm. And it has good build up, very easy build up to the point that some uh, players are just rushing it like crit on Nyx Assassin. And it provides a lot for your team actually if you can use it properly. I just saw uh, FY from LGD build this yesterday on Nagasire. Now, Soul Ring slightly nerfed in terms of his recipe cost. This item was being built a lot on like uh, strength offlaners like Tide Hunter and Omni Knight. So interesting to see that change there. Gonna make it a little bit harder for them to afford that. Spirit Vessel has also been reduced in terms of cost of recipe. Um, this item was being picked up by a lot of four position supports, just being rushed. And it was the build up was just really nice for them. It gave them everything they needed. It was items they were gonna buy anyway, like uh, Urn and Windlace. Now all I need to add on top was a pretty cheap recipe and a Vitality Booster. Now, going on to the hero changes. And there's not many of them, there's two are almost at the bottom. As for the hero changes, Chemical Rage basic attack time is improved from 0 0.4, 0 0.3, just very slightly. But then with basic attack time, is like small increments is significant, especially if you have very high attack speed. Um... But I mean, level one chemical rage. Assuming that alchemist doesn't have so, eh, it's minor, minor buff. Now this thing here. So he has even more cooldown or uh, cooldown reduction on his uh, level ten talent for his stun. Now it goes from negative five seconds to eight seconds. Now his stun has a sixty second cooldown, five second channel time. Now this change, he literally is just spamming stun. Now they're also going to increase his stun damage by 40 with a talent at level 20. And do they want Alchemist just to be a stun spammer? A supporting stunning Alchemist? We'll see if that actually applies. I don't think so, but it might be a nice meme mill to try out. Now for his level 50 talent, they're going to increase the health by 50. Again, none of these buffs are major. You can see small buffs to really crap heroes, like Ember Spear. I'm going to slightly buff his slide of fist damage. My 20 at level 4. Somewhat significant. At level 1 is nothing though. Uh, and Ember just feels real bad. The Chandra's a good hero. It's going to get her base damage reduced to affect her laning stage. 
Before, she was just super fast. She can just harass a lot of heroes out of the lane and just dominate. So any base damage change on her would affect her. Shakiro reducing his attack backswing, which makes it so instead of going <coughs> to cast this fire, he's going to be casting a little bit faster. Uh, liquid fire, that is. Uh, Juggernaut going to reduce his crit. Juggernaut is pretty strong right now, especially in pups. So just small nerf to him there. Now Less Track, Lina, pretty garbage heroes. Uh, Less Track is going to receive a mana cost reduction on Split Earth. Whereas Lita going to get base intelligence increased by 3, giving her 3 damage, a little bit more mana, as well as her base damage random variance is reduced. So this is making her overall a stronger laner in my opinion. So if you don't know what base damage variance is, so if you look at a hero's damage number, it's not the actual damage number, it's still a range. And within that range, some heroes have more variance than others. For example, like CK has a very big variance and so does PL. Whereas uh, some heroes just have a very small variance. I can't really think of a hero on top of my head. I only know the heroes that have... I think most heroes have average variance. Whereas some heroes just have more than average. But uh, for Lina, it was 18 damage spread. Now it's only 12. Making it a little bit easier to last hit on her. Especially the under towers and stuff like that. As for Lechstrak, I, I would still think he's bad. <laughs> Even though the mana cost reduction. It's nice though. Because he is mana dependent, right? Now for Lion, Mana Jade uh, slows the target. If you noticed previously, this was spoiled in the uh, page up top. I don't think I mentioned it, but um, Mana Drain now slows. So it's really nice now. You can actually uh, stun, hex, and then slow with the Mana Drain. And it's going to continue to slow them even more than their hex slow. But wait, does hex already put them at minimum move speed? I think it does. I don't know why this would be useful then. It's annoying though, because then you can't walk away from it as easily, so... I think it's a decent buff to line actually. Because 14% is low at level 1, I mean... Would, uh, against a hero that has no boots, can be somewhat significant. Especially a slow hero. Lycan, a shapeshift cooldown has been increased, Lycan's OP of course, and this is a significant nerf to him. He was already so dependent on his ultimate. Um, upping the cooldown on this is definitely going to affect him, especially when he maxes it out. Before, when he didn't max out the shapeshift cooldown with the cooldown reduction talent, uh, it felt like it was always up, but now it will have a small timer between it when he can actually use his shapeshift. They're also going to reduce his armor, which will affect him in the laning stage, which is already one of his weak points. So, again, very small nerfs to like him, but it will affect him, for sure. For Medusa, I'm surprised to see these nerfs, as she isn't really picked that often anymore but she still feels broken in certain scenarios so we're just going to affect her latent stage a little bit with her cast range being reduced for mystic snake she can't spam from such far away and the talents as well they're going to buff her talents that are underutilized so a lower 10 talent they're going to increase the evasion they're also on a level 15 talent going to increase the mana steal level 20 talent going to nerf that mana by 100 that was an op talent i think people are still going to go for it this is the second time this talent got nerfed now Morphling, his cast range has been increased for Morph, that's his ultimate, by the way. His mana cost has been reduced to 50 at all levels. This ability is just garbage, I don't feel like it matters what they do to it, it's still going to be garbage. Maybe not for support Morphling, who knows. The cast point has been removed as well for Replicate, which is uh, I think the ability for him turning back to Morphling after he uses his ultimate. Um, and again, they just nerf the hero really hard by removing him being able to use his attribute shift while being stunned. So I don't feel like this matters. For Nature's Prophet, he's kind of underutilized in the meta, even uh, Liquid not picking him up. But now they're going to reduce his uh, Wrath of Nature cooldown at level 1 pretty significantly by 20 seconds. Now this is a big buff for heroes using it properly for teamfight damage in the early game. But it's going to be a nerf to players using it improperly to just try to get farm. Because don't use Nature's Prophet Ultimate to try to get farm. You actually end up pushing all the waves out. Make it harder for your team to farm the map. At the same time, you're going to just mess up a bunch of CS on the map as well. Because you're not going to get the last hits realistically. Unless you time it perfectly. Omni Knight. Dejin Aura range reduced. This hero is pretty broken. So they're going to nerf him here in laning stage. Dejin Aura felt like it had such a big range. We're going to slowly nerf that, I mean, just by 25, not, nothing major. Purification cast range has also been reduced by 50, which is a big deal as he's really reliant on getting in there to get that heal off and now he's getting a little bit closer. 
will affect it, but not nothing major again. Small patch. And small patch every two weeks though. Small patch every two weeks, they add up. Now, the thing is, we didn't get anything major here. So no big item, no t hero reworks. So I wonder how are they going to add those? I mentioned in my previous video on uh, Ice Frog's announcement of the uh, bi-weekly patches is how are they going to deal with like actual big changes, like the map changes, um, the items, new items, hero reworks. Is it still going to come in the bi-weekly format? I think it will. That's how League works, I think. In League, like if there is like a big hero rework, it still will come in that bi-weekly patch. It'll just come less often, right? So there won't be like a whole new game ever. It, it won't feel like the game is completely new and I know that definitely shies some people away as they come back in the game and holy crap this big patch how how do I catch up everyone has already just played this patch they don't know how everything works like I'm, I'm just I just feel lost I feel like this, this makes it easier for uh, players to maybe like take a month break and not have an insane patch come out all of a sudden they just miss out on it entirely now Oracle mana cost reduced for fortune's end that's his first ability his purge he felt really mana um, starved because of the nerf to uh, his purifying flames way back. He got a mana increase on that. And it's pretty spammable. And Oracle is really out of the meta right now, except for like when picked with Huskar or something like that. And then some people would just pick a Dazzle over him right now. Playing Lear, Willowing Thunder cooldown has been increased. It felt like it was too low. Actual, actual nerf to Pang Lear. CC and C would be happy. Pudge actually receiving a nerf. Keep in mind this patch, no Arcana yet, no battle pass. Um, there was like a blog post that say those are coming. They're planning on reworking the battle pass entirely. I didn't get to mention it in this video. I did talk about it a little bit in my previous video that is now lost. But uh, I'll talk about that when it actually comes. Now for Pugna, his level 15 talent, gonna be slight buff to that. Plus one nether ward health to plus two, plus one didn't feel significant. Life drain damage has been increased. Actually just straight up buffing his ultimate. Nerfing his Agnums, because now his Agnums don't give damage. It just removes the cooldown. But I mean overall he I mean, he appreciates that, right? Shadow Fiend, Necro Mastery Max Souls reduced, so it only applies from levels one to three. Now the funny thing is that you actually can get max souls off of clockwork, just level one. I feel like I was, this was just a nerf to that. So you can't get max souls plus an additional. You can only get 12. If you get 12, you go to lane with 12. You can't get 12 and then use that to get 18. Shadow Fiend does feel like a pretty strong hero. And that's just a slight nerf to him. Now this is a pretty major nerf to Shadow Shaman though. His Aether Shock cooldown is going to be increased from 8 seconds to 14 at level 1, which is significant. Because he was really strong and harassing. Because in some games, he would just level Ether Shock level 1. You would harass with your like 90 damage or something like that. And then you would just Ether Shock. And it was super low cooldown. Now, it's going to be significantly increased. Almost by double. And now his Shackles damage has also been increased at level 1 pretty significantly. Overall, nerfing Shadowshan's early game. Which felt, I mean, ridiculously strong. Tinker, his base move speed has now been reduced. Make him a lot easier to be ganked. And also, of course, it's going to affect him a little bit later on in the game as well. He's not having that extra move speed. Um, it can affect him in some scenarios. Not all. Because he usually is like hiding in trees or anything like that anyway. Now, for Tidy, his toss cooldown is increased from 8 to 11 seconds. I feel like Ice Frog was watching uh, Star Ladder yesterday. Where uh, Liquid ran Tiny Io. And it just felt like toss had no cooldown. My control is like tossing the heroes back like three times in a single fight. Like, they would try to run away, then they're like, no, toss back. And they try to run away again, no, toss this hero over there. And he was using, literally using toss three to four times per fight. And the reason why you don't see that too often on a tiny is because he's, it's like pretty mana intensive, but with an IO with bottle charges, um, he was able to just spam it. It just felt insane. There's a nerf there. Surprised that's the thing of all things they're gonna nerf about the hero. Tusk. Snowball can no longer be cast while rooted, which doesn't make sense. The item or the ability is pretty broken, and that's a bit of a nerf there to Tusk. The Wind Ranger is gonna get the most minor buffs I've ever seen, but her Wind Run mana cost is gonna be reduced by 10. Her level 20 talent now has been changed because plus one shackle shot target just wasn't realistic. That literally, that literally applies where three heroes have to be lined up. How is that gonna happen? That's never gonna happen. But now. 
um, it's going to be plus 0 0.5 second shackle shot duration, which is a lot, actually. Her level 25 talent has now went from 30% mini stun focus fire to 35%, trying to make Wind Run Ranger a more viable hero. Now, that's going to actually be it for the patch notes analysis. Now, I forgot to actually switch over, but one thing, I'm not sure if I covered it or not. I think I mentioned it real quick, but you can actually see all of this in-game without having to click to this page. And you go to the learn tab and you go to gameplay updates now gameplay updates will show you everything then you update and there's a really nice page with shadow feet in the background i wish i showed it here instead but uh we can just scroll through it real quick so you can see the general changes you can see the item changes here everything with the item icons with the hero icons with the talent trees so you can see everything real nicely Scroll down, you see what the, the ability icon as well, so you know what ability it is in case you don't know it by name. And all that. Rolling Thunder, Nerf, Narot, see that? Doesn't that look nice? And this is going to apply to every patch. And you can even scroll through the patches. So this is a really good change. I don't know why it wasn't already in the game, because before you had to literally click here. And look look at this stuff. Right? And like go go to the patch here. Wait, hold on. Can't even click it. Oh, wait, no. This is the page it brings you to now. Yeah, before it would bring you to, like, this page. Before it would bring you to this page, where you click to this. And notifications. But now, easily on the Learn tab, Gameplay Updates, first tab. Now, of course, training is going to be for another next video or a, a upcoming video. And in terms of things I can show you right now, I can show you just turn to my profile. So, for profiles, this is what they did. You show heroes. You know, click through the heroes. Now, this is what happens when you click update. You click here and you're able to add three heroes to the side. You also can choose the background of all of your loaded screens if you have them, which is nice. And you just save your changes there. And you can even click this just to view the full background image. Now, for the profile, they increase the size of the profile picture. Uh, they put the activity feed here. And you can open it up big. Uh, they move your trophies and your battle pass and stuff like that. Now, these are your stats. I haven't played any games yet, so it's not updated. It also shows your most successful heroes. Io. Wow. Um, and these are your previous matches and all of that. Uh, I'm assuming none of these other things have changed. Oh, did my game just crap? No, we're good. Lag. Right. I don't think there's anything else there. So, this is going to be it for this video. I shorted it down to one hour. Unfortunately, my first video was not recorded properly. But I hope you guys appreciate me making these patch notes analysis videos. I try to get them out as quickly as possible. I don't know exactly when the patch even came out. When did it come out? Can I see the time here? I don't even know. But uh, this is going to be it for the video. Make sure you leave a like down below if you like these patch analysis videos. These are going to be shorter, more focused. And I'm going to try to not be a purge about them. Um, and again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Because again, I'm doing this for every single patch analysis. Or every single patch. Coming every two weeks. So, I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure you subscribe again. And peace out everyone. It is Hachi, signing out.